This Asia international is allowed fertility irrigation by composting. All are allowed. Argentina, Brazil, fertility irrigation is allowed. Colombian areas, by composting is allowed. In Europe, composting and CMS. So CMS is nothing but uh, but the value added uh, fertilizer. So concentrated paint uh, uh, wash basically that is allowed. So same same is the case with PEV and syrup also. Now coming to the other effluents, what we are basically doing with other effluents from the molasses waste is process condensate, which is treated and recycled back to process. Flour wash, floor washing, which will be sent to evaporation and converted into process condensate and again treated and recycled back. Cooling down blowdowns treated or used for gardening purposes. Boiler blowdowns collected and recycled back to the cooling towers. WTP reject uh, can be, if they are very small in quantity, can be used for ash quenching or they will require treatment and will have to be recycled back. And coming to the grain plant, grain plant is also uh, uh, the chart is already elaborated, but the only section which is getting added apart from the molasses is this pre treatment section where starch has to be converted into uh, sugar basically. So, yeast cannot convert starch into ethanol directly. First, we will have to convert it into uh, sugar, starch has to be converted into sugar, and then we can get the ethanol as per uh, same molasses rule. Now, the only change here is what we are calling as effluent in case of molasses. Here we are calling it as a co-product. So whatever spent, uh, spent wash, I, I would call it is spent wash, but this is basically called as thick syrup, which is subjected to various unit operation, decantation, evaporation, and then drying, and converted into DDGS. So this DDGS is basically a cattle feed, and almost 35 to 40 percent of your grain cost is recovered from this DDGS setting. So that much is the importance of this DDGS here. So as I already told you, there are uh, uh, there are recycles which are there already in the grain as compared to molasses. Scholars influent in case of spent wash is actually it is yes in case of sorry uh, there is some behind. Okay. So this DDGS is having almost 40 to 50 percent of uh, protein content, which is very, very good for animal feed. And this is going as cattle feed, poultry feed, and even for fish eateries. Here also we get some of the effluent. Uh, I, I will not again into details of that. The pro uh, processing methods are same. And these are some of the project requirements. If you want to set up 100 KLPD, 200 KLPD, 250, 300, 500, whatever you want to set up, there will be requirements of steam. Uh, these are the numbers. Uh, the power, water. So water almost you can see six liter per liter of ethanol which we produce, and then the area requirement. So this chart will give you a uh, uh, detail of what what is required. But this is required from project side. But let us go into the minute level of this grain plant or process plant, whatever we are talking about. So what is the national interest in this? Is lower footprint, the lower energy footprint, and lower lowest carbon footprint. And industry interest are minimum uh, uh, operating cost, maximum yield, minimum maintenance, flexibility in feedstock, minimum fuel consumption, minimum water consumption, and zero liquid discharge. If you see both of these, they, they are not much different from each other than the additional interest of the industry to earn the margins over the product. They are, they are very, very much in the sink of each other that they want minimum fuel. Maybe the reasons may be different that fuel availability is not there. Minimum water consumption because water getting water is a challenge. ZLD because CPCB requires the CPCB or MOEF requires the zero liquid discharge. But they are more or less in sync of. And as rightly said by uh, Jatinder sir, we have to have the technologies to take care of this. And in terms of technology, if you see, we need advanced bio processes and best design practices, uh, which can come from yeast and enzymes, advanced separation and concentration processes and process optimized and integrated solutions which will take care of all the uh, factors which have been shown on the earlier slide so basically we are looking at yield maximization multi product high quality products like uh, from the same plant we can get uh, ethanol pharmaceutical alcohol uh, then uh, alcohol required for uh, your hand sanitizers reduction in water footprint co product maximization like gdgs co2 reduction in carbon footprint so all this Technologies can help, and for that, first technologies, advanced bioprocesses, which can happen with modified enzymes and modified organisms. What this will give is increased yield, increased ethanol titers. So gone are, gone are the days when we, we were talking about 10% and 12% alcohol. We are not talking about 14 and 15% alcohol in the fermenter itself, which can increase up to 18% also in near future. 
reduce the reaction time to reduce the byproduct formation and reduce the reduce in the water footprint but you need a very rigid design and best design which will take care of all the uh, all the parameters i mentioned here like raw material composition yeast plant operating parameters fermentation process hardware so design should be in such a way that it will take care of all the parameters and give you the uh, desired output and, and there, there are te te technologies which are uh, we have already talked about that over the years steam consumption has gone down drastically and we now are moving towards the seamless distillation part and here are the technologies which are taking uh, taking you to this evaporative distillation eco smart distillation eco fine mbr so so all these technologies are also taking care of the reduction in the steam part and talking about the concentration technologies yeah we, we talked about a uh, very high steam requirement in the concentration of the uh, bmsw or concentration of the raw spent wash and again uh, required uh, high steam in case of making ddgs so now with the, with new plants which we can have a option of mvr uh, mechanical vapor decompressor where uh, the steam requirement can be practically zero down to uh, nil and we can uh, do away with the steam requirement and uh, if we can see a option of green power uh, these these are very uh, unique uh, offerings and in dryer also whatever comes out as a energy in the dryer also be integrated so all in all we are talking about a integrated plan which will not leave a single line to be integrated with each other so that we get best of the all the world